Hey guys, Chris here for Thomas Guitars and Basses. Welcome to Guitar Tech Tips Q&A number 10. As always, thanks so much for the comments, advices, critique, everything in the comment sections. Keep them coming. Let's get into this. This came under the Gibson style tunematic bridge setup video from Rudy Ruse. How do you convert a Stratocaster bridge with tremolo to a tunematic style bridge with stop bar or stop tail piece? Uh, you, you don't, you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, this would be the maddest modding project ever, I guess, because you'd have to obviously remove the strat bridge, then fill up all the routings, like the whole body is cut through and at the back side there's also some routings for the uh, tremolo springs. You have to fill up pretty much everything and then drill the holes for the posts for the Gibson style bridge, which then will not work. Why? Because Gibsons have a neck angle that looks like this. This is the body, this is the neck, it's not parallel, it's like this. And on strats, this is that straight. This would cause the issue that that Gibson style bridge, that tunematic bridge, would sit way too high, which means that then the string action would be way too high, which is nice if you want to have a slide guitar, but for normal playing, it's not gonna work. So then you'd have to change the neck angle of that Fender or Fender style guitar, um, or you'd have to route the, uh, the bridge, the Gibson style bridge, way deeper in the body, sort of sink it in. It's like, it's mad. <laughs> it would be probably a fun project, but it's definitely not worth the trouble. So if you want a fixed bridge on a Fender or Fender style guitar, just block the tremolo. Just block it, make it flush, like sit on top of the body and just block the whole thing. And then it's a fixed bridge. If you want to go even further, you can of course fill up that routing like with a solid piece of wood, just glue it in there. And then you can put that um, Strat style fixed bridge, non tremolo bridge on top of it and use it that way. That makes sense. A tunematic style bridge of Gibson guitars does not. This one came from Major Dirt under the pickup swap guide video we made for strats. How can you check if a pickup is doing fine or it's declining? Kind of new to these stuff, so a proper way besides just listening to the side sound would be nice. Um, if you want to make sure that the pickup is not faulty or damaged or anything, uh, you can measure its resistance pretty easily actually. You don't even have to open anything on a guitar or the electronics or whatever. You don't have to fiddle around or desolder anything. You can just simply stick a cable in there, just plug a cable in uh, the guitar's jack and then grab a multimeter. You want to measure resistance, so set it up that way. And then use the black side for ground on the other end of the, that cable, on the other plug and the red for the tip. And then if you made sure that all the parts, volume and tone, everything is on 10, you can read the numbers. This is the neck pickup of this guitar. It reads 10.5K. So that's good. It's probably not the most accurate way of measuring it because the pickups are connected to the whole electronics where other things influence, of course, uh, everything, like all the resistors, like the, the pots and everything. It all sort of affects each other, but it's accurate enough to figure out if it's faulty or not. If this pickup, for example, was faulty, it would read probably like one point something or two point something or even less. In that case, you definitely know that something's way off. And the same thing for the bridge pickup. I just go with the toggle to the bridge position and measure it, which is probably going to read around 11, maybe 12. Yeah, 11.83 kilo ohms, which is uh, perfect for P90s. So um, yeah, there you go. It's as simple as that. Maurizio Camva had a question under our Protect the Wood, How to Oil and Protect Your Instrument episode. Chris, how can I darken the wood color of my guitar with Paul Ferro? Thank you, mate. I'm not a big fan of darkening fretboards. You can, of course, use stain, which will darken the wood, obviously, uh, but I kind of dislike it because as soon as you have 
regions on that neck, on that fretboard, where you just play a lot and bend a lot and touch the wood and rub it with your fingertips, it will just become fair, again, like lighter, because you just rub away some wood and that doesn't really look very nice. So for that reason, I don't like to stain fretboards. If you are impatient and don't want to wait a couple of years until it gets darker, because that's what UV light does, so like sunlight does, I would maybe recommend using some kind of oils. Like there are some oils that are anyhow recommended for fretboards, which is something you should do, of course, regularly oil and protect uh, the unfinished surfaces. Um, those colored oils will darken it. So it's as simple as that. I, I really like this uh, Sandberg oil, for example. It's a natural oil. It's kind of honey yellowish and it definitely darkens wood just a tiny bit. This is the oil I'm talking about, this uh, Sandberg oil, the fin fingerboard oil. It looks like honey, pretty much. It's, um, it's a very nice oil, I love it. And uh, this one darkens wood, like rosewood, powerfero, all those darker unfinished wood that just look nicer if they're just a bit even darker. I love using this one for that. And um, yeah, you could of course, as told, stain wood, but for fretboards, I'm just not a big fan of it. Next one is from Jeff Lambertus, and it came under a how to wire guitars video. Got picked up a Jackson loaded with EMGs, no ground wire hooked up in the tram cavity. What wire goes to the ground? What wire is the ground? Normally black wires in guitar electronics is gonna be the ground wire. Um, not always though. In Gibsons, for example, you will not see black wires, probably not even any colored wires. Normally you'll see this metal braided wires or just simple plain wires, like thick one core, solid core wires. Um, you can always find the ground wire if you look in the electronic cavity and check which wires are soldered on the back side of the pot. Probably it's going to be the volume pot where all these wires um, just meet each other and there's just one bigger solder joint. That's ground. And all those wires that are connected to that back side of that pot are ground wires. About the EMG part, that it's not wired to the tram cavity, like there's no string grounding. That's not an issue because EMGs are active pickups and they do not need um, an extra uh, grounding for the strings. There's just no ground hum. It's a different kind of uh, circuitry uh, because of it being active. So don't worry about it. You just leave that as it is. And uh, if there's no hum, you don't have any issues with the grounding of the guitar. Alex Martz had a critique under the Floyd Rose tutorial video we made never tune a guitar with floating bridge lying down. It always has to be in the playing position, which is true. Um, yeah, if you want to be super exact and you're going to be playing that guitar to record something or go on stage with it, the last one or two rounds of fine tuning should definitely be in playing position. That being said, you've seen the video. If not, it's going to be on the playlist. Uh, the playlist is in the description box under this video. Um, I've tuned that guitar in that video on the workbench and uh, then played it. It was perfectly in tune. So yeah, it's safer and better tuning, especially floating bridges in playing position. But in most cases, it will also work in lying position, like on, on a workbench or anything, especially if you're doing the rough tuning of floating bridges. Like if you ever tuned a uh, Floyd Rose loaded guitar after you restrung that guitar, you know how many rounds you will need to <laughs> go through until the strings are in the ballpark, like around the right pitch. Um, if you do 10 of those rounds on the workbench and then for the last two, you pick up the guitar, you hang it on a strap and, and just hold it in the right playing position, that's gonna be just fine. So um, yeah, but Good advice, definitely. If you want to be sure that the guitar is 100% perfectly in tune, then of course, hang it on your body and um, tune it in playing position. Here's a question from Dr. A uh, about push-pull pots. Does it need to be the tone pot, not the volume pot, to split the humbucker? Am I right? You can, you can put that push-pull pot wherever you want. Like you can put push-pull pots on 
all the positions, all the volumes and tones. If you have four of them, like a Gibson, you can put four push pulls there. It really just depends on the ergonomics, like where you prefer having it. If you put it in the volume position or in the tone position, you do the same thing. You, you choose and solder all the cables and wires on the same pins of the push-pull pod. So if you want to have that as your volume pod, because you prefer having the push-pull pod closer to your playing position, then it's going to be that. It's up to you. If you want to have it out of the way and uh, want to put it where the tone pod is, which is usually lower or further away from your, your normal playing position, uh, then you put it there. It really doesn't matter. And the last comment is from Trash or Die. Hi Chris, could you explain a little about cab wires, please? I need to rewire my cab and reading the internet about it drives me crazy. <laughs> I get it. Um, is any 4mm or 16 gauge speaker cable good for guitar speakers? Not seen many guitar cab speaker wires too. Thanks. Uh, you don't have to use 4mm or 4 square millimeter um, cab wires for guitars, not at all. It's like most of the high quality ones I prefer using or just would recommend anyhow are like between two square millimeters or two and a half square millimeters, um, which is perfectly fine. It's about the quality, I guess, if we're talking about tone sucking, which is a different thing, but the thickness, um, it's as told, two, 2.5 millimeters is square millimeters. It's gonna be enough. Um, you'll find actually a couple of those um, in the Tomon web store. I just checked before uh, we started recording this. Uh, there's like at least a couple of them, like a summer cable, which is something I, I love. Um, you can buy however long you want, and then you can use it for your cab. Uh, but there are other brands as well, of course. Um, it's it's gonna be fine. You don't need four millimeter. You guys take it easy. Thanks so much for all the comments. See down there in the comment section, of course. And if you want to check out any of the other Guitar Tech Tips videos, the playlist is in the description box under the video. You guys take it easy. Don't be afraid of setting up and fixing your guitars yourself. It's time to become your own guitar tech. I'm, I'm actually thinking. Like, I look brain dead, but I'm actually... Where were we? Where were we? Where were we? There. It's so strange. It's not cold. It's not hot. It's... Nothing is falling apart. Yeah. I don't feel home.